On the build share today, I've got a little demo set up for you. Behind me is a stone wall made with stone just like this. It actually is more like a brick. And I'm curious if we hose the front of that, basically simulating a rainstorm or sprinklers hitting it, how long would it take for that water to actually penetrate to the backside of that stone? Okay guys, let me set the scene here. We're on a project that my company actually took over under construction. And we found out that we've got, in my mind, an inferior house wrap on the house. You can see it actually on this portion of the house over here. This is a woven pin punch product, very susceptible to damage and not even waterproof by itself, let alone when you penetrate it with staples and nails and damage that happens on job sites regularly. So this was a perfect area for me since the stone was already coming down to run this test. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run a hose on the outside of this wall. And if you notice, this is a gable wall. We've got maybe a one foot overhang here, but this is a, a very high exposure wall. For sure the base of the wall is gonna get wet in a rainstorm, let alone that 2 a.m. rainstorm that happens all the time with houses that have sprinklers that hit the house. And you notice too, we've got a window up there with a window sill and it's really hard to keep water in the long term from not penetrating behind that masonry facade when you've got a punched opening through there like this window. So here's what we were able to do. On the inside, I had Jordan cut me some inspection windows. We basically augured out the foam that was in place. We cut out the OSB and the house wrap in one area, we left it in the other. And I'm curious, how long is it gonna take if we run the hose on the outside before we see liquid water? Let's go have a look. Okay guys, we're inside now, and this is the back of that stone slash brick. Uh, I've got a little camera set up here so you can see my what I'm seeing here. I think that we're gonna see some liquid water maybe around this joint, and I'm having Jordan spray right above here. You can see we've got the back exposed here, but I left the house wrap here, so we're gonna do some a second test, but Jordan, you ready? Okay, he's hosing out there. So like I said, I think he's spraying on this uh, kind of above here. We'll find out how long this takes. We have a little bit of a running bet. I think it's gonna show through pretty quickly, but I could be wrong. We shall see. We'll put a, we'll put a uh, little rolling clock on here. I can hear the water running out there. It's as if we've got a little bit of a rainstorm happening and, and there's water splashing up against the face on here. Oh, oh, we've got water showing way in here. There's a little void right here. You can't see it with the camera, but that void is filling up with water right there. And this mortar's holding it back. So we might be seeing it here before two. Oh, hey! Yeah. Yes, how long did that take? 30 seconds, 45 seconds? Hey, keep going, Jordan. Let's see if we can get some more to come through in another spot. There's a little void right here. We'll see if we can get, get that on camera, but that little void right there was filling up and then it was right there that it's spilling in. Gosh, how long did that take? That was definitely under a minute. It had to have been under a minute of uh, hosing. So how long does your typical rainstorm last? Do you get rains that stop after one minute? You know, if your sprinklers are running in the middle of the night and hitting that wall at 2 a.m., I mean, they could run for an hour hitting that wall and you never know it, you wake up in the morning. The other thing that's interesting here is this is a, uh, a porous stone. This is in fact a, uh, a looter's limestone, which is known as a very porous, it's basically a sponge on the outside. So besides just the liquid water issue I've got here is when that stone gets soaked on a rainstorm or in this case a hose uh, event, it doesn't take long for the front of that stone to look dry. You know, the sun comes out, dries out the front, and it looks uh, lighter colored like this pretty darn quickly. But what's happening is that stone is actually getting soaked. And this is a pretty thick stone. This is like a five inch stone right here. You've got a lot of ability to soak up tons and tons of moisture, you know, gallons and gallons of water. And then the other issue with this is solar drive. 
right? That stone gets super wet, let's say in a rainstorm overnight. Then the sun comes out the next morning and starts to dry it. The face looks dry, the stone is still super wet. It's gonna start getting hot. And what's gonna happen is the solar drive is gonna drive that moisture towards the inside into this airspace right here. And if you have an inferior house wrap like this that has holes in it that are gonna let air in, that are gonna let liquid water in, there's also places where there could be a cold condensing surface in this cavity, especially if we've got air leaking through this wall cavity. And when we've got a cold condensing surface, we've got a very humid cavity that can lead to damage on the backside of the sheathing. And the more sensitive your materials are, the more that damage is, is susceptible. And typically when we remodel, we find the most damage in the bottom, you know, one to two feet. And so when we've got an OSB here, we've got an inferior house wrap, we've got all wood framing, these are sensitive materials and we have to be really cautious in what we're using on those materials. All right, here we're seeing even more come through now. It's not just that pocket, but it's coming through in other areas as well. I wonder how far up he's actually spraying up there. I wonder if we're gonna get any coming down through here or here or here at some point as well. Oh yeah, there's another another bead right there. Look at that. And this one's growing. Oh, here we go. There we go. The other joint's leaking too. So this is five inch or so deep rock. This joint right here looks perfect. I don't think the mason could have filled that joint any more perfectly. Look, we've got mortar all the way to the backside there, and yet look, within a couple of minutes of water hitting the face, we've got liquid water running out the back there. That's a lot of water too. Now, what does this cavity have going for it though? What does brick and stone have going for it? There's an air gap back here, and the mason did a real nice job of not having mortar droppings filling this cavity and mortar touching in this part right here, which means that this liquid water is probably not going to hit the face of our house wrap. We're going to have vapor drive issues, but we're not going to have any liquid water probably hitting this house wrap, at least not in this location. Oh my gosh, huge gusher right here. Woo! I got to move the camera. Oh man, look at that. Can you see it? Look at that gusher right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a ton of water coming in right there. Wow. That's just a geyser right on that joint. Holy cow, just all of a sudden it started running and running. You can see it right in there. Look at that, that joint right there is just absolutely gushing, gushing the water. Can you see it coming through there? Wow. Oh yeah, you can see it. It is just pouring out of that joint right there. All right, I think the test is probably okay to, uh, we're probably okay to stop now. I think we've proven the point that water does penetrate this stone or brick. What I'm curious to see is how much faster would it penetrate where we've got a window above so we cut an inspection hole right below the window and we're going to reset here oh my gosh it is absolutely pouring through that hole right now um hard for me to uh, talk i'm so giddy that my test worked just as i thought um but we're gonna we're gonna reset the test here guys and oh man look at all that water just absolutely gushing into that cavity it's tons of water Anyways, we're gonna reset and I'm gonna have Jordan spray that window down up there. And let's see if we can get on this inspection port right below the window to water, some water to come out. So back in a sec. Okay guys, test number two. We proved that the field will leak. I'm curious to see what will happen at this window penetration. So if you look here at the window, I got my second camera going with my bird's eye view. You can see we've got some packed mortar and some packed stone at the sill here which means that I basically have a direct connection to the house wrap uh, on this. And so this area, if it leaks, scares me a little bit more because now I'm actually getting liquid water that's gonna run down the face of this house wrap. So 
Let's see what happens and where we do or don't get some water coming out. All right, Jordan, you ready? All right, hit it. Okay, we got water hitting the face of the glass here. So let's see how long it takes us to see anything. So far, so good. 10 seconds in. Seen anything? Yep. Where are you seeing water? Bottom left. Oh, 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 there's a ton of water. Water in there. Look at that. It's like raining inside the cavity. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can use my flashlight to help. Look at that. It is absolutely pouring out of there. Can you see that water right there? Hard to show on camera. There's, there's a rainstorm, literally a rainstorm in that cavity. A ton of water. And that house wrap is getting soaked on the face. Oh my goodness gracious. A ton of water hitting the face of that house wrap right there. It's hard to get a visual. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. Look at that. Look at that liquid water on the inside of that house wrap. Just pouring down the face. Coming down off the ladder here. Look at this. We got just an absolute rainstorm happening down here as well, guys. So you can't tell me that that house wrap that has some penetrations in it, or in this case, look, it's got some. Oh, look. Oh my gosh, we gotta move the ladder. Look at this, guys. On the inside here, we've got water coming in behind the house wrap here. Uh, now, we did break the house wrap right here in this corner, you can see, but it's, it's absolutely pouring in this, in this area. Let's see if we can bring the light down. Now, in fairness, we did break this house wrap right here, but look at this. We didn't do that. There's a nail penetration right there that happened from, looks like a brick tie. And any staples in this house wrap would leak as well, which means that really anytime this gable's getting wet back here, we're absolutely getting that OSB wet. Now we may not get as wet as this, this is a hose, but we're in Texas, we get one inch, two inch rainstorms all the time where it rains a quarter inch an hour for four hours. There's a one inch rain right there. And this is just one hose on the window. That tells me that this cavity is absolutely getting wet. And if you've got an inferior house wrap like this, your OSB is gonna get wet. And if your OSB gets wet, there's, in my mind, zero chance it's gonna dry. There's a little bit of a capacity for it to get a little minor amount of water, but not liquid water like this. Once, the, once this cavity gets wet on a new construction house built to today's codes for air tightness, there's no way this is gonna dry. This would easily have pretty decent rot issues within a short couple year span. 10 years down the line, we'd have serious rot. The crazy part is you might not know about this though for 10 to 20 years. You know, this house could go maybe 20, 25 years and all of a sudden the hardwoods in here might be buckling or you might see the MDF trim on the bottom starting to buckle or, or get uh, pooched out after year five or year 10, but yet there's some serious damage back there. And over that period of time too, look, these, these studs that are holding that header up there, those could easily start to experience some rot as well. So I think the main point of this test is, well, number one, use a good waterproofing product. You've seen me on all my videos talk about several different products. I'm not repping a particular product, but I'm saying you need to pay attention to it. Number two, don't assume that you're that your brick, your stone, your cladding is gonna keep the water out, cause it won't. Look, there's absolute rainstorm going on back there from that just small amount of hose water. And for those of you that are saying you could seal the face of the brick or paint it, you don't wanna do that either, honestly. There's no sealer you can use that's gonna keep water from getting through. You can't caulk it enough to never get water coming through. And the problem is if you paint it or put a sealer on the outside to try and stop that liquid water from coming through, you've created another problem, which means that you've put the ability to dry to the face, you've really slowed that down. So now the only place that water that gets soaked up into that porous stone or mortar can go is to dry to the inside, and that's bad too. So you're much better off putting a good house wrap on to begin with, really paying attention to your waterproofing details, 
and then letting that brick or stone do whatever it needs to do. There's no amount of caulking or sealing that can fix this. Guys, I'm gonna put in the description a link to a couple of uh, building science articles that talk about this same issue. But really the point here is, you know, your house has to withstand the elements. And yes, we're going to a little bit of an extreme by hosing this house down and giving it a pretty serious drink of water, but that's really no difference than a good rainstorm. So we really need to pay attention to our waterproofing details to do this all correctly, to use good products and good craftsmanship. Guys, thanks for joining me. Hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey guys, a little postscript here. One thing that we found after we stopped filming, it's been 10, 15 minutes since Jordan stopped hosing. What do you notice down at the bottom there? There's no weep holes where this masonry meets the foundation. Now those could be drilled later, of course, and we'd often do that. It's not as good as a true one, but check this out. Look how the water is coming out in that really interesting pattern where it's coming straight through the mortar joints. And in fact, you can see that those dark spots there, and then it's running out on top of the foundation. In fact, there is even a little puddle of water coming in through a fissure on that natural stone right there. Just, just absolutely peeing out of that stone right there. What are the takeaways on that? A couple things. We need to really pay attention to our base wall flashing. I did a video with Prosico a while back. I'll put a link in the description where we put a stainless steel flashing up and we really make sure that that water can't back up into the house. That's a critical detail and this just goes to show weep holes are important and you need to really pay attention to where your wood meets that foundation. All right guys, super fun build show. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you later.